The Fallen Anchor by Sonny Arifian. Did you hear that whistle? Could you feel that electricity pulsing through the stands? Had you tasted that acrid cloud of wet turf, sweat and heat spray? Or caught the silent trajectory of fermented hops and urinal cakes descending through the air like parachute mines from above? If you're out there listening, then I need you to know that there's been a murder. Somewhere, a man is lying cold and lifeless on the newsroom floor. And all the while, you have been living your life, as it were, in blissful complicity. You knew the victim well once, didn't you? You'd opened your door to him, and he'd addressed you from your armchair. Six o'clock sharp, no doubt. Well presented, clean cut and mildly mannered. The sound of his voice alone was enough to fill you with a warming sense of assurance. He never failed on his promise to return after those messages, and he always saw himself out, provided you were 100% sure whether or not you needed to take the big coat with you the next day, of course. He'd been there to lament with you when disaster had struck, to trade a wry smirk whenever he'd shared something anecdotal or amusing, and to beam when something had touched your heart as it clearly did his, too. He'd watched you grow from when you couldn't engage or interact to when you could, but had no time in the world for him. And finally, when you had embraced him as confidant in your later, more refined years, he'd shared your outrage, your admiration, your grief and your pity. And yet, one morning, you'd awoken to realise that he was expendable. And when he'd disappeared without a trace, nobody had seemed to notice. Not even you. Going out in five, four, three... And now, all oxygen appears to have been robbed from the stadium as they emerge from inside the tunnel. The crowd rises in one stupefied mass, whilst the pieces take their places on the game board by themselves. A queen's head, and they'll be running into the wind. Might the weather be a factor? What's it going to take in order to get them over the line, you wonder? Well, as soon as we hand it over, we'll need to take it back, of course. And that's going to take tenacity. I suspect they'll want to hold on to it. So we've got to show them that we want it more than they do. When we do get it in our hands, there's no use simply standing around with it. In a word, execution. You know, the same as before, only much more of it. Execution. I know a little about that. A most sudden and untimely end. Face down in the pools of light and under the teleprompter. Who was there to report the crime? For the reporter had vanished from his desk, and that desk was now in the palm of everybody's hand. The bullet's trajectory had proved that the killer had taken aim from the wings and fired. And with fibre optic speed, the fallen anchor had met his swift and resolute fate, thrown overboard and now sinking malignantly into the blackness of static. Six feet deep, under a firmly packed bed of likes, follows, posts and reposts. By the time that the feeling had returned to his fingers and toes, something was not quite right. The victim found himself in the middle of a field, cordoned off in white lines and emblazoned with corporate insignia, removed from his post and reduced to the sidelines his cries now drowned out in a cacophonous flurry of team pride. A cunning pride that marauds and dives deep into the sacred Sundays of those that shout at their radios from verandas or sneak updates from phones under set tables many, many miles away. 
proof, if anything, that irony is a fate tantamount to death. The casualty had not only been forced to forfeit his name, but the killer too now assumed his identity. With the airwaves asphyxiated and constricted with the viral scourge of vloggers, influencers and trolls, the fallen anchor was locked out of the conversation he had initiated all those years ago. Finally, with the opposition conceding prematurely, the home side triumphantly releases its foot from off their necks as the clock inescapably plunges into garbage time and it's all come down to this moment. Steam billowing from his shoulders like an overheated engine, the hero with the black tape around his locks wipes his mouthguard on his sleeve and blows his nose on the pitch before leaning in to give the final word. As those riding the city-bound bus, those mending their roof from a ladder and those crammed in the stands all lean in closer and closer still, hoping to gain some revelatory insight into the penultimate play. But before that, I'll look down the lens and tell them, if you're out there listening, then I need you to know that there's been a murder. The Fallen Anchor, written by Sonny Arifian, read by Keith Sparrow and Aidan Nightingale, directed by Connie Crosby, with sound recordings by Phil Innes. This is part of a series of bedtime stories for grown-ups, produced by the Writer's Block.